Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. I'm live at Wikibon headquarters. We're here in our new studio. I'm um, here with Stu Miniman on controls. Thank you, Stu, for setting me up today. You know, the studio's coming along, building out. We've got our new desk. We've got our new signage. And, uh, you know, it's, we're making some progress here. We're really excited about 2012. And, um, and that's why we're here to do predictions 2012. Big data, flash, cloud, and Facebook. Now, when I was at IDC, I didn't do a lot of predictions. I knew better, but I kind of got sucked into it at, at Wikibon and I've been having some fun with it. Uh, before I get into 2012, I want to look at 2011, um, which was kind of mixed. I actually think I nailed it in 2010. I had some really good predictions. Three par gets acquired. Oracle goes to war with everybody. These are my 2010 predictions. My 2011 were a little bit more mixed, but I'll let you decide on how I did. So here's my, my 2011 review. Uh, the first one was big data becomes more of an opportunity than a headache. And you know, I think this is becoming obvious at, at corporations. It used to be from a supplier standpoint that software was the main competitive advantage, things like operating systems and databases. And I think increasingly from the technology industry's perspective, um, data and information and the way in which you manage and monetize that information is becoming more and more important. From a consumer side, from a customer perspective, the way in which companies manage their data and actually package and are reselling their data is becoming a source of competitive advantage. So you're seeing this in a lot of different industries, certainly financial and services, uh, energy, pharmaceutical, healthcare, uh, government. Uh, I think this is becoming an obvious trend, so I'll, I'll, I would say that was a, 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 a good prediction. The second one, number two, was little data powers big data. What do I mean by that? We've got a situation now where we have an internet of things, smartphones, uh, devices, appliances, buildings, they're all instrumented. We live in a world of, 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 of devices that are instrumented, that are smart. Um, and you know whether it's automobiles or buildings or those things I mentioned, they've all got microprocessors in them, and they're everywhere and they're driving tons of data. They're really driving a lot of the big data revolution. Uh, so I think that's a correct prediction. And number three, Sub hundred dollar smartphones are going to power that little data. Didn't happen. In 2011, I thought that Android was going to take the market by storm with a sub hundred dollar initiative. I think the iPhone 4S said it all. People lined up to buy what is generally, you know, just an okay phone. It's faster, it's nice, serious junk. But people clearly indicated that they're willing to pay much, much more than $100. So maybe this prediction comes true in 2012 with adoption in Africa and China and maybe India. And I think it, it probably will, but that prediction was wrong, a little bit ahead of its time. Um, number four, apps everywhere fuel the data explosion. I think this was a correct prediction. The killer app turns out to be the app. Um, and it's really, again, driving more data. And I think you're going to see that extend into 2012 where the app store is going to come to the enterprise. Um, number five, I called it the end of this ridiculous integrated hardware application data client model. What does that mean? Here's what I wrote last year. New application delivery models and the explosion of smart devices will combine with the continued adoption of virtualization to mean that we finally see the light at the end of the tunnel for end users. For nearly three decades, we've lived with a model of my PC is an island unto itself with an internet connection, and the notion of virtual desktop infrastructure will evolve into one um, uh, uh, where the virtual data and the application infrastructure are there no matter where I am and no matter what device I'm using. My apps and my data will be always on, always available, backed up, and secure. Well, that really didn't happen in 2011, but I do think it's the generally accepted model that we've seen the end of the PC era. It's not the most common deployment model, but it will be over the next three to five years. My number six prediction of 2011, memory class flash proves to be the model of the future. Now, maybe again, this is not the generally accepted model of the future, but to me, the successful IPO of Fusion IO and the fact that everybody's chasing Fusion IO as the leader really makes this a hit, an accurate uh, prediction in my view. Uh, Fusion IO just recently announced one billion IOPS, but what got lost in that announcement was um, uh, the ACM, the auto commit memory, which allows you to use Flash as a, as a direct memory tier. It's another step on changing the application model, and I think that that prediction has proved to be the, the wave of the future. I'll come back and talk a little bit more about that in terms of new applications, think Facebook, think iCloud. 
Um, number seven, the cloud becomes an integrated storage tier. That's another prediction that I made in 2011. I think I got it wrong. Um, my, my vision was that the cloud via an ether, ethernet connection and storage controllers would become a new storage tier. I think automated tiered storage is starting to mature. I think it's now ready for prime time, especially at the high end, as David Floyer just wrote, but it was really a pipe dream in 2011. It really didn't happen. It was a prediction that was ahead of its time. I think there's hope for this forecast, even though some people might think it's off base. Like right now, the cloud is isolated. It's for you know, clear use cases like backup or archive or, or small companies. It's, it's today not an integrated part of most IT shops. So, so that one I think was wrong. Number eight, another one I got wrong. Cloud on-ramp players become the hot new startup play. Now you can sort of give me some credit on that because I think in the first half of last year, this was a hot segment, um, but like the one previous, uh, I think it was a bust, frankly. I mean, we saw Certus really choke and had to lay off a bunch of people. Nasuni did a huge pivot in the middle of the year. Twin Strata, you know, they raised money, another $8 million, but really I'm seeing more non-announcements in this space than I are real customer activity that impresses me. It's unclear to me that this class of system is going to disrupt the traditional storage controller space. I could be wrong, I, I mean, I haven't given up on it yet, um, but I just don't see the traction. I've, I've always questioned you know, the value of sort of on-ramps, and I think a lot of these on-ramp guys are repositioning and really trying to become more disruptive to the traditional controller market, but I need to see more use cases and real customers before I'm convinced, so I, I, I have to give myself a thumb, thumbs down on that one. As the next one, I said rising oil prices will have a ripple effect into IT budgets. I think this was a case of, you know, like it's like on Sundays, uh, I'm afraid the Patriots are going to lose, so I might voice that, but really in my, in my heart of hearts, I think they're going to win. Uh, but this didn't happen. You know, it might yet. You know, we see oil prices, you know, creeping back up. Um, but I wouldn't say the recent, <clears throat> you know, so-called downturn in tech has anything to do with oil prices and, and ripple effects uh, into IT budgets. I think that just didn't happen, uh, but it's something to keep an eye on. Um, and, and by the way, I'll come back and talk a little bit about that uh, in terms of the, the so-called tech downturn because I don't think we're having one. I think it's, a, it's an illusion. Um, number 10, the backup market gets disrupted. Again, I got this one wrong. It did not happen. Um, EMC dominated um, in the backup appliance space. It's got two-thirds of the market with Data Domain and Avamar. HP's recent announcements are taking aim at EMC, lot, making a lot of bold marketing claims. We'll see what kind of traction HP can get. I like HP's mojo. I think HP you know, trying to take on uh, the leader is a good thing. Uh, it'll create good competition uh, and, and EMC's not sitting still. HP's a big company. They're doing some other great things that I'll talk about. But, um, but as well, I was looking for data protection as a service type of models to emerge. And, um, and that really didn't happen in, in 2011. We saw some bits and pieces of it um, with guys like NetApp and SyncSort doing some interesting things, but you know, it just it really didn't take off in, in uh, last year, and I think I got that wrong. Um, so you can see I'm on a streak of, of misses here, and my last prediction, it was a, it was a throw in, 10.1, and this was a long shot. I said it was a long shot, but I said EMC's core value will increase, which was an interesting prediction. What do I mean by that? So EMC's core value I defined as the market cap, the market valuation of EMC minus the value of its VMware ownership, which it holds about 80% ownership of VMware. Now that value was hovering around 20 billion in early 2010, that value being EMC's core value. It dropped to 18 billion in late 2010 and it closed 2011 at just under 16 billion. So it's dropping consistently from 20 to 18 to 16. So the market ain't buying EMC's core business as a value generator, which I think is frankly crazy. I think the core storage business is good. It throws off a ton of free cash flow, but despite, but despite EMC's strong market share, its growth, and its ability to throw off cash, it is fundamentally declining in value when you take out the value of VMware. Um, so the market says either storage is a lousy investment, which I don't think is true, uh, or it says that EMC is going to dramatically tank uh, its share of the market, which is possible, but again, I don't see that as, as the case. I think EMC continues to execute very well. It's got, you know, it does a great job of marketing its, its vision. Or the market's dead wrong about the stock. I wrote last year that I thought EMC was undervalued. I still think that's the case. I think it's a great way to own VMware at relatively low, low, low risk, but in any case, I was wrong about it last year, so uh, <laughs> don't, shouldn't necessarily follow my stock picks. So that was 2011. Um, 
at my look back. I'll let you decide how I did. Uh, I think it was mixed. I think there were some good calls in there, but you know, I think, uh, I think 2012, I'm hoping for a better performance. So let's look at 2012 and, and see what's coming. No surprise, big data, flash, and cloud are dominating, and I've got some other vendor comment, commentary in here as well. My number one is big data is here to stay. Big data is not just the buzzword. The big data fund announced by XL Partners, a $100 million fund, is just the beginning. I think it's a, a drop in the bucket. We're going to see more big data funds, more big deals in this space. Uh, more suppliers are going to be marketing big data, and we're going to start to see it. Substantive solutions hit the marketplace from traditional enterpri enterprise players, um, which is going to lend increased credibility to this market and, and accelerate adoption. Um, I think the ecosystem is maturing, and, uh, and it's here to stay. Number two, Hadoop-based big data solutions will intersect with traditional enterprise data warehouse offerings. And I would make this prediction for even non-Hadoop-based uh, uh, solutions, uh, such as LexisNexis. I think you're going to see the intersection between Hadoop and traditional enterprise data warehouses happening. All the big enterprise whales are going to have solutions for Hadoop, um, where the needles that are found in those haystacks end up in traditional or emergent uh, enterprise uh, data warehouse solutions like a Vertica, for example. Uh, large co corporations aren't going to chuck this infrastructure. They've got billions invested in that uh, uh, traditional and emergent uh, uh, structured infrastructure for data warehousing and business intelligence tools. It's not going to go away. Rather, organizations are going to find ways to leverage the two and bring structure to unstructured data. Number three, the Hadoop wars are going to continue. Cloudera, was on a path to become the next uh, Red Hat, $10 billion market valuation for Red Hat. Everybody wants a piece of that action. Hortonworks spun out of Yahoo, had some big you know, venture funding behind it. You're seeing MapR team up with EMC. They're not going to let Cloudera run away with it. I think those wars are going to escalate. Even though none of these vendors like to talk about it, they don't like to admit it, they are going after the big prize. Of course, they want to focus customers on on proof points and business value, but the reality is behind the scenes, these guys are aiming for multi-billion dollar uh, uh, valuations and value to be created. Um, so it's an interesting sort of dynamic there. Ultimately, I think this competition is going to be, while somewhat confusing for the marketplace initially, I think it's going to be ultimately prove out good for the ecosystem. And um, here's the deal. The winner in this is going to take by far the biggest prize. They're going to create billions of dollars of value. The number two guy here is going to maybe make a little dough, and the number three guy will be lucky if, if they break even. So um, that's why this is so important. You know, the third place finishers really don't make a, 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 a lot of money in this marketplace. And you've got a really interesting dynamic. Our Jeff Kelly has written a lot about it. We've covered it extensively. I think Cloudera right now is the darling child. Um, but, and Hortonworks has done a great job of marketing its openness. Cloudera really has to transition from a company that's largely done training to one that wants to sell software. A lot of customers out there aren't paying today for Cloudera and Cloudera software. They've got to prove that that model can work. They've done a great job of really creating a lot of buzz. And then you've got EMC, who's got a distribution channel and got some credibility in the marketplace, and I think there's other, other companies here playing. I mentioned LexisNexis. They are definitely one with a solution, selling real solutions to the marketplace, solving real problems. And you can't leave out IBM. IBM is a, is a major player here uh, and has a big analytics play. And also watch HP with Vertica and Autonomy uh, in that space. So number four, in 2012, big data is going to be all about applications. I really, I stole this one from Jeff Kelly, but it was in my head and it's just too good to pass up. With any emerging market, really the rubber meets the road with applications. That's what's going to drive adoption. Like any market, it's going to be highly fragmented. Like any applications market, I mean. It's going to be highly fragmented by industry. There will be some, some, some horizontal applications, particularly around you know, the analytics space. We're going to see a lot of financial services and risk assessment and insurance and, um, and, 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 and big pharma applications, healthcare, government applications, fraud, security. Very specific, and, and I think 2012 is going to see a lot of action around there. Number five, um, I've got a way to get ways to go here, folks. I've got 10 of these. So number five, the flash hierarchy gets more granular. What do I mean by this? For two decades, we have seen function migrate from the server out to the SAN for good reasons. 
for sharing purposes and, and, and uh, high availability and disaster recovery. What's happening now is you're seeing function move back closer to the server. You're seeing situations like Fusion I.O. where applications are being written to take advantage of an extension of memory. Um, and Flash is really changing that game. You're going to see in 2012 much more granularity across the Flash stack, if you will. You're going to see all Flash players like SolidFire you know, come to market. Uh, and you've seen those with SolidFire, Pure, and others. Um, and you're also going to see management across that stack. Um, EMC's Project Lightning is an initiative designed to really try to take more uh, a control of that stack and extend the traditional SAN architecture into the flash hierarchy. So you're going to see a lot of action there. Again, big land grab, Fusion IO leading that charge out to the early lead, great IPO, a lot of mojo, big announcement yesterday, um, and I think you're just going to see more and more action here. Uh, uh, valuations are hot, they're, they're going through the roof and uh, for good reason. Number six, new cloud-based applications are going to emerge as a result of Flash. We've already seen this. Think about Fusion I.O. and, and Facebook. Uh, when you upload a picture into Facebook, it happens so quickly. The iCloud, a lot of, 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 of new emerging applications really taking advantage of that memory class Flash, and that's going, that trend is going to extend and it's going to accelerate. We're going to see block-based applications being deployed in the cloud and cloud service providers uh, driven by and powered by solutions like I mentioned SolidFire before, all flash arrays that support new mission critical applications, database and other uh, uh, high performance applications are really going to start to come to the market in 2012. Number seven, more IT shops are going to be coming profit centers. IT for years has been a, been a, been a cost center. That's the way that everybody's looked at IT. That is changing. IT is becoming a profit center, not just a cost center. Uh, and there are many, many examples of this, uh, and I've written about this a lot. We've seen it with USC, uh, NYSE, uh, Euronext, uh, Cerner. Not only is the cloud you know, become the archiving platform of choice, but, but cloud service providers from Amazon to established players like IBM and CSC and others are proving that they can do security and availability well enough, well enough, I stress in the case of Amazon, to entice small players, small companies, you know, like Wikibon, we use, we use Amazon. Um, and, but medium size and large customers are looking for more. They're looking to the IBMs of the world, to the CSCs of the world, so they can put their data in the cloud and, and trust it. And this trend is going to accelerate in 2012. Now, I mentioned IBM. Now, I mentioned IBM, and it's really interesting what's powering IBM, at least a part of IBM's cloud, is a company called Nirvonics. So IBM and Nirvonics did a deal this year. IBM's OEMing Nirvonics' technology and delivering cloud services. So this company, Nirvonics, was out there. They were bumping along and really had a breakout year in 2011. I didn't predict that, but, um, but it happened. Um, they hired a new management team. They brought in Scott Genero from... Uh, from former HDS, former DDN, former QLogic, knows the enterprise business, knows the enterprise storage business. And what you're seeing with Nirvonics is they have great technology, they just didn't really know how to package it and market it. That changed in 2011. There are very few enterprise technologies that are delivering what I would call true cloud. There's a lot of cloud washing going on, and we've talked about this here at, uh, at Wikibon and, and our partners at SiliconANGLE. What do I mean by cloud washing? People basically taking an existing product and putting a cloud face on it and saying, okay, hey, we have cloud too. Um, now, we saw this year, this past year uh, uh, in 2011, the Oracle public cloud. Well, it's cloud, but it's expensive and it's all Oracle all the time. EMC has Atmos. You know, it's definitely cloud-like. You can build clouds with it. Um, but, you know, look at Amazon. Amazon made the model, really with elastic computing, no CapEx up front, it's all OpEx. But the question then becomes, can you guarantee quality of service? Um, look at Amazon's platinum service. It's $180,000 a year on top of the existing service. The enterprise players, like Nirvonics, like a CSC for example, they're not charging extra for that you know, high availability. It's built into the service. Um, can you do audits? Enterprise customers need to do audits of the data center on, uh, uh, th that their data is being hosted on. 
Amazon really doesn't let you come in and do that. Can you geographically control where the data gets placed? These are the things that enterprise customers want, and this is why uh, a company like, like Nirvonics is emerging and doing well. Amazon's SLA is really like this. Hey, we'll do our best, but if we don't, we're sorry, send us an email. That's really what, what the Amazon SLA is about. So people are looking for new solutions. Companies like Nirvonics are solving uh, these problems. They've got true cloud offerings. I got some inside you know, scoop on, on Nirvonics. Uh, I've talked to a number of their customers, USC, Cerner, uh, DR Fortress is a company out in Hawaii that I talked to. Uh, IBM's a customer, VMware's a customer, Cisco's a customer. You know, they don't talk about that a lot, but I've uncovered these things. Johnson & Johnson, NBC Universal. So the inside baseball on Nirvonics is they grew like crazy in 2011. Triple digit, very high triple digit sequential bookings growth in 2011. Uh, USC, I talked to them, they installed 8.5 petabytes of Nirvonics technology. So the petabytes under management, they're exploding, they're hiring like crazy. They hired the guy from Google, Paul Fruton, we've had him on theCUBE. Um, very high on this company. Um, you know, the bottom line is it's a very disruptive uh, technology from the standpoint of moving CapEx to OpEx and it's taking share from the traditional storage model. My prediction number eight, storage is no longer a two horse race. For years it's been EMC and, I, and, 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 and NetApp as the pure play storage companies really banging heads with, with each other. In 2012, that's going to change, and it's, we've already started to see it change. 3PAR is going to rapidly gain share again. When I came back into the storage business after I left, I, I asked my friend John MacArthur, who should I look at? Who are the interesting companies? He, he said there were three that you really need to start with. The first, he told me, was 3PAR. Uh, the second was Data Domain, and the third was Compellent. I love, love, love 3PAR technology. I love it till my daddy takes the T-bird away, as the, te as the saying goes. 3PAR grew a triple digit uh, uh, growth rate last year, they grew much faster than they did as 3PAR independently. So they've got put into the HP you know, framework and it's been exploding. My prediction is that 3PAR will continue to grow at that triple digit rate. Uh, it'll make inroads into the high end in 2012. It's trying to redefine what tier one is, focusing on simplicity. Uh, so, so that's my prediction. They're going to continue to grow very rapidly um, and they're going to they're hit both the high end and the mid-range segments. My other prediction here is I think Dell is very dangerous, particularly with Compellent. Uh, Dell has you know, big supply chain, great distribution channel. Uh, basically, Dell has replaced EMC uh, with its own IP. It's uh, acquired Equalogic, Compellent, Ocarina, Exanet, has to integrate those for sure, uh, but it really is doing a good job with regard to, uh, uh, as I say, replacing the EMC revenue. And so look for HP and Dell to be, become much more significant players in the storage market uh, in 2012. My number nine prediction, Oracle. The first disappointment won't be the last. Now people say I'm really hard on Oracle. I am hard on Oracle. I love following Oracle. I think they're a really intriguing company. I have a great deal of respect for Oracle, but it's, you gotta, gotta call it like it is. On or Oracle's last earnings call, uh, the company blamed softness on the, its softness on the longer sales cycles due to slowness in up the chain approval processes for its customers. And observers also took this to, to mean a, an across the board softness in IT, in technology. It's all BS in my opinion. Here's what's really happening. Oracle, plain and simple, is arrogant. It starts from the top, Ellison, Safra Katz, Mark Hurd, I'm sorry, they just, they are arrogant and it trickles down. I've said it before, Oracle is like a giant telco. They're extracting rents from their customers. They were the only company that I know of in 2009 in the middle of the tech downturn that raised prices. They, ha they, they conduct onerous uh, audits. Their, their contracts are convoluted. They play hardball with their customers and people are pushing back. That's what's happening. Companies like Salesforce and Workday who have a software as a service model who have software that's as good if not better than Oracle's are delivering it with lower cost, more simplicity, no big expensive CapEx up front, no onerous contracts. That market's going to change. Oracle is becoming the new CA and that's what's happening in the marketplace. So my prediction is the first disappointment of Oracle isn't going to be the last. You're going to see more bumps in the road for the company even though Again, the company is one of the best, if not the best, at acquiring companies, you know, Oracle and IBM. They're not going away. 
Uh, I'm not predicting Oracle goes away, but I do think you're going to see more bumps in the road. You know, the Sun acquisition, which I've been on record saying it was fantastic, um, has seen some bumps in the road, declining revenue. So uh, uh, look for more troubles uh, out in uh, Redwood City. Number 10, my last prediction, the Facebook IPO is going to be a boon for tech. I do not think that tech is in a big softness. Uh, Facebook's going to go public in 2012, and like the big tech IPOs before it, Netscape and Google, Netscape in the late 90s and Google in the mid-2000s, Facebook is going to, actually Netscape was in sort of the mid to late two, uh, 90s, Facebook's going to catalyze a huge tech momentum in 2012 from an investing standpoint. So the rising Facebook tide is going to lift, lift all the tech ships that can play in analytics, social media, the things that you know, really are driving the mobile, the things that are driving the marketplace today. Billions are going to be made uh, for tech investors. Not everybody's going to win. Um, you've got to position yourself you know, to take advantage of this, but the, the big players are the ones who can play it position themselves as, as hot and picking up on the emerging trends. Big data in the enterprise, for example, are going to do really, really well. So those are my predictions for 2012. I'm sure I missed some. I'm sure you have some agreements and disagreements with me. I love to hear them. Uh, tweet me, at D Vellante. Hit the Wikibon uh, blog. Make a comment on my predictions post. You know, hit Wikibon. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks, everybody, for your support in 2011, 2010, and 2009, 2008, 2007. It's been an amazing run here at Wikibon. Really appreciate uh, everything that, uh, that you guys have done, and, and, and you've been a great audience. Um, look for more Cube gigs. We'll be uh, out in California at the end of the uh, month at uh, Node Summit. I'll be there, my partner John Furrier at Silicon Angle. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching, and uh, have a great 2012. Bye for now.